I am so happy to be here doing this. Um, I don't know the, uh, the non-Jewish, um, non-female equivalent, but Christian, you are such a mensch. Uh, I mean, really, uh, it's a long schlep. Um, and thank you. A uh, hard-gotten foreign correspondent wrote a line in the 30s um, that I frequently steal. Whenever you see hundreds of thousands of sane people trying to get out of a place and a little bunch of madmen struggling to get in, you know the latter are newspaper men. Well, that stopped being gender specific or limited to newspapers a long time ago. And today, Christiana Mambour is the sanest mad person I know. She has the guts and ingenuity to wade into mayhem anywhere. But that's just commuting to work. What, what matters in reporting is, then what? I mean, with rare humanity, prodigious knowledge, and a firm grasp on the big picture, she gets to the heart of the most complex stories. And she tells them in crystal clear terms with that plumbing Anglo-Persian inflection the world knows so well. You can't learn her kind of instincts. Um, I always chuckle at one <laughs> network house ad that features a correspondent in a war zone saying, this is actually hell. And if that were Christiane, she would skip the story at hand and get the devil on camera. Um, she's an exceedingly generous colleague and friend. I caught up with her again last year at the War Correspondents Prizes in Bayou of France. After all her fame and fortune, she was the same old lovable Christiane with, among pals she'd lived with in, under siege and under fire. She sprang onto the world in 1990, fresh out of Atlanta, as a coalition was preparing to take Kuwait back from Saddam Hussein. She was on a, a press pool aboard the US um, aircraft carrier that fired the first shots. And military minders had muzzled reporters and tried to influence what they wrote, you know, cut down their communications. Afterwards, she materialized at our little office, a little AP office in Dahran, with a soliloquy that was so rich in humor-tinged outrage that a crowd gathered around to listen to this strange beast. Um, we crossed paths often in Bosnia, the Congo, Somalia, Kosovo, God knows where, but you know, these aren't shitholes, as our president alleges, but rather homes to decent mothers and fathers whose countries have been crippled by circumstances far beyond their control. Christiane gives voices to these people and to help distant viewers understand that. She's always ready for anything, but she's no bang-bang junkie. Um, war correspondent isn't really a profession, uh, an occupation, although too often stories tend toward conflict. Reporters cover what matters. Um, but there is the bang-bang. Soon after 9-11, we both got to Kabul, and after a while, we're about to fly out to Pakistan, hitching a ride with, with the, um, with, on a UNICEF plane. But the BBC security escort, you remember this, a British ex-commando had a bulky gear bag, and the Afghans opened it and found a pile of antique rifles still in use. And the UNICEF guy went bananas. You know, humanitarians aren't supposed to transport arms. And the Afghan commander wanted to lock us all up. And Christian belted out a tsunami of words in Dari that froze him to a pillar of salt. <laughs> and you know, we soon took off after, but that Brit stayed behind. He's probably still there. She has a kinder, gentler side. My wife Jeanette got to know her when she based in Paris and sometimes bicycled by the boat we live on. Once Jeanette's mom, on a visit from Ohio, nearly suffered cardiac arrest when her TV idol suddenly appeared in the galley to help wash the dishes. Um, we went to her wedding in a, in a splendid villa north of Rome. As it happens, that coincided with the U.S. Embassy bombings in Tanzania and Kenya. Luminaries, including John, F., John Kennedy Jr., her college classmate, house, you know, housemate, um, their old pals gathered in this, munis in this magnificent chapel but it was touch and go whether Christian would show up at the altar or head for Hifimichino Airport. <laughs> um, these days, as we all know, she does a daily broadcast from London. And as I say, it was a serious schlep for her to get here. 
um, and then she's going back. Um, but it was more than generous friendship that brought her. And by uh, I explain what this award is about. John Peter Zenger, a colonial publisher, stood up to King George who didn't like his content. He went to jail for printing fake news. Um, and as Hildy reminds us, his wife continued to put out the paper. That was the basis for America's First Amendment and all the struggle since then to keep our facts straight so people can decide things for themselves. Today, old style objective reporting is difficult when so many Americans can't tell facts from opinion. The other day I came across from a, a quote from Steve Bannon just after the inauguration when he was still the president's Rasputin. He, it said, the media should keep its mouth shut. No, no, we should yell our heads off. I mean, we need to use our wondrous new tools to reflect reality. And it helps that we can hover over a story with eyes in the sky and we've got all these other ways to look at things. But we need to be down at ground zero in the thick of things. We need to smell the story and look at it and kick its tires and know what it is. That's what Christiane does. She has a phrase with which we all know by now. She says, what journalists must be, truthful but not neutral. Check out her shirt. She asks the right questions of the right people. She draws on in interviews over the years with world leaders who seek peace and with generals who fight the wars when that fails. And she homes in on people who matter most, the victims, the perpetrators, the cast of characters around whom all these big stories turn. We desperately need that on a lonely planet facing endgame. Our challenge is not fake news. That's been around since ancient Egyptian generals sent papyrus tweets back to the Nile, claiming, claiming victory after being rooted by Darius the Great in a place we now call Iran. Our challenge is understanding real news, getting the story straight in its broad context and within the historical continuum. Thank you for coming, Christian, and more. Thank you for showing America and the world beyond day after day, year after year, what this vitally important John Peter Zinger Award is about. Thanks. Thank you, Mort. Hey, guys, let's go to the videotape.